Today is the 28th of August, so August is now drawing to a close. It's coming to the end of our holidays. Uh, it's a Sunday morning and it's only just turned 10 o'clock, so we've come out for an early walk, trying to miss all of that great heat that we have. And it's already pretty warm. So just looking out onto the sea here in Palmanova, there's a really big boat out there. And there's already quite a few people in the sea. We were at uh, Calamillor on the other side of the island yesterday. We, made, we ventured forth. It took us um, in total nearly two hours because we stopped off on the way. But uh, it takes a long time for us to get to Calamillor. So it's the reason we don't go to places like that. In fact, when we got there, I think, uh, we realised it's probably somewhere that we've never actually been to before. At least we've never walked along the front before, so it was all new territory uh, for us. And we were very pleased with what we saw. It's uh, a lot of similarities to Palmanova, which is our regular spot for walking because the walking is quite easy here. And uh, that's what we found in Calamanior as well. It was uh, flat, so we could. Uh, walk quite easily and then get to the, the road at the back where the, the town shops were and uh, probably more well, more shops and bigger shops uh, more exclusive sorts of shops than you'll find here in Palmanova so very pleased with it and uh, sort of made us feel as though we need to explore that side of the island a little bit more so when we get the opportunity we'll probably go and spend a, a few days over there and uh, try and find out a little bit more about what's going on. So when we got there, it was about, I think about 10.30 when we got there and the beach was already very busy. And uh, it's getting busy here in Palmanova as well. We're just opposite the Fergus style uh, Palmanova Hotel, people ask about sometimes. And then we've got all of the bars and restaurants along here. Many of them won't be open yet because it's uh, very early on a Sunday morning and uh, when you look out at the beach it's uh, locals largely with their beach umbrellas who've come down for a Sunday at the end of August some will be starting back to work next week like me for example it's the Can Black people come here to have a drink overlooking the beach and we do stop here now and again and we do have, uh, we've, we've eaten here a few times as well with our friends, uh, Barbara and John. Um, one of our favourite sort of places to go is the Beehive, which is called the Colmena. And uh, is that where we're heading for now? Have a little coffee, yes, I think I need a coffee already. <laughs> we've only done a few steps, but uh, it's, it's just a nice way to start the day, a nice way to start the walk. Just uh, watch the world go by for a while and uh, have a coffee. There's already a few people in the behind La Colmena and uh, so we look for a place where we can get a bit of shade and uh, hopefully just a little bit of breeze, not too much. walk around I'll uh, try and bring you up to date a little bit with some of the news that I've been reading and uh, thanking people for their comments we're getting lots and lots of comments at the moment and trying to reply to them all it's taking me a bit of time sometimes to catch up thank you all for my lovely comments on the cake which I enjoyed doing I need to make a birthday cake for Freya One okay for you, dear? Well, the Colmain Manor, the Beehive, is always a great place to stop for coffee and just watch people come by. And we've just met Sue, Sue McCaffrey, who's been watching our channel and makes lots of comments. And it's been really nice to meet her and uh, catch up. She's staying at the Sol 
Harmanova Hotel. She says it's uh, perfect for her and we hope she enjoys the rest of her holiday. The sun's getting hot and uh, we're enjoying the coffee for a moment before we go on the rest of our walk. Just after half past ten in the morning. Well, in the short time we've actually been in the Colmena Beehive, uh, the beach has started to fill up. Ready, dear? Onward and upward. Temperatures are rising, so we'll see how far we manage to get from this intense heat. Just, uh, Nisa's just thinking about going back to the UK and uh, one thing I read in the paper today is that Ryanair strikes are causing problems again. Hopefully we can get all of those things issued, sorted out. Another thing for um, people booking their holidays for next year, it seems that uh, prices will be considerably higher. I know they seem to have been very high this year, uh, but added to all of the things that have happened, um, the petrol, the fuels, the resources, everything just seems to have energy, seems to have gone up considerably, and uh, all of that's going to be reflected in the price of holidays next year. So this year, 2022, is going to be a bumper year. It remains really to be seen what happens to the northern European economies next year to see whether people are able to book their holidays. Maybe some people have already started doing that, I don't know. I know we've got a holiday already booked for next year. Two. Two holidays, yeah. And, uh, well, I assume that the price is fixed. I must say, like most people, didn't read the fine print. And uh, I seem to remember years ago, subsidies were added, there was fuel subsidies. I uh, really hope that that doesn't come in again. But it's reflected in all aspects, uh, so from actually getting here, the hotels, the paying the, the waiters and the people that work in the hotels, the staff, uh, to, to actual costs of food, all considerably higher. There's been reports in the paper that uh, some restaurants are having to take chicken off the menu because it's so expensive. Really? <laughs> uh, there's been issues with chicken. A lot of chicken is supplied locally on the, from the island, but uh, when the population of the island doubles, as it does do during the summer, then chicken gets imported from the mainland and there seems to have been an issue somewhere on the mainland and they haven't been able to supply the chicken and so chicken has suddenly become quite expensive you're just looking back on the beach this first beach here and there's lots of people already in the sea uh, probably the best place to cool off and this is uh, in the shadows here so am I right we've got some steps to go up now so uh, I'll see you at the top well I made it to the top without too much of an issue There's a bit of a breeze out there, so the water's a little bit choppy, but it does really look very nice. A few people on their paddle boards as well. I think someone's just fallen off on there. And then the beaches, the beach we've just come past is actually a no smoking beach. I'm not sure how well that's been implemented uh, during the season or whether it's been enforced, but that one was a no smoking beach. Most beaches are supposed to be dog free, uh, but this little place in front of us is one that's designated for dogs, so I already see five dogs, six dogs. Lots of dogs down there. <laughs> so that's a little doggy beach. I'm just going to go over 
the bridge now. Mallorca. <laughs> Somos socios. Oh. Sí. <laughs> yesterday very good. Yesterday good match. Tres puntos. Two dogs, at least in the sea there. I don't know. I suppose dogs need to cool off just as we humans. Quite a nice breeze now. And just as we go on, it's where they attract more of the, the boats on the water. They come and anchor and then swim to shore or have a little boat tender to take them to shore. equally busy with people in the sea and on the sunbeds. Now I've got to go down the steps so off goes the camera. Now, yeah, the same we can see both beaches from here. Just beyond the Santa Lucia there's a far beach, it's on the TS beach. This one's pretty busy. to McDonald's and something nice we saw on uh, on Facebook this morning was on the Caldianotis board someone I guess it's the people from Nova Itapa had, uh, had put up a clip from our video uh, saying recommended by Stephen and Ita in Mallorca and Nova Itapa is one of the places we do like to go to. Do really good value tapas here in Palma Nova. It's not the only place, of course, there's lots of places for tapas. And um, just down the way was my tapas, we really enjoyed that too. It's the Hotel Tropico. We even had tapas in England, didn't we, as well? In London? Yeah. We did. It's lovely. Yeah. Uh, Iguanas, Iguanas. And it was it was really good, wasn't it? So yeah, we, we even managed to find somewhere in London uh, for us to have our Spanish tapas experience. So uh, I said hello to that boy who's got the, had the Mallorca shirt on and uh, obviously a supporter of Real Mallorca like ourselves and uh, they played away this weekend to Rio de Acano and uh, well, I don't think anyone was expecting too much it was an away match always going to be difficult and uh, uh, Mallorca don't particularly have a good uh, record at the Madrid teams so um, we went to the Mallorca cafe as we usually do with our friend Monroe and uh, we sat down with a pint and uh, we did have a bite to eat there as well didn't we darling? Really nice wok de pollo, um, chicken wok, very tasty and uh, 
so we sat down to watch the match and uh, we put on a fine performance so uh, right early on like about 10-15 minutes uh, Mariki headed the ball home after a, a really good cross from Danny Rodriguez and uh, Mallorca were 1-0 in the lead as the game progressed thought that was might be it Rio were putting on lots and lots of pressure but then didn't have any tries at goals really though did they? well they had one that hit the post so that was a pretty good try but our goalkeeper didn't have any saves to any particular saves to make uh, but uh, Mallorca um, went ahead again in the second half or went one more in the game into the lead so it was 2-0 with Kang In Lee who did a, a really good goal and there was another goal which was uh, uh, Galareta who uh, scored another goal but uh, unfortunately he was declared offside and looking at it he was well offside uh, so 2-0 we'll settle for that 2-0 means three points to Real Mallorca and uh, hopefully that puts them somewhere mid-table and here we can see the, the Spanish families are already settled under the trees for the day now so it's just 11 o'clock and uh, there's trees here in the Palma Nova provide a really nice picnic area and, uh, it's like there's a family over there set up for a birthday party perfect send the children down play on the beach and you can sit under the shade a gentle breeze and a nice cool bottle of rosé wine I think for the beach today someone was asking me about the Senses Hotel and it's somewhere I, I'm sorry if I don't point it out often enough but if you look across the road we've got the Dolphin Bar and above that is the Mallorca Senses Hotel this is the Palma Nova one and the the entrance the main entrance is actually on a, a road at the back there but there is um, right now, just <coughs> round here, I don't know, across the crossing, in the corner there, there is a, a way you can get into the Census Hotel. It's for residents only, I suppose, so it's not a gate that's generally open, but you can get in there and you can get up to the swimming pool area and then on up into the hotel. I have actually been shown around the hotel uh, by the hotel manager, uh, Franco Ferto. He's a really nice gentleman. Uh, speaks excellent English and uh, he's uh, taken me there is a there's a roof terrace up there that looks down on the pool or down to the sea with spectacular views it's really uh, good and uh, so if you're staying there you're lucky because it's a really nice hotel and uh, you tell the manager you know Stephen and Anita I'm sure he will say so do I <laughs> He's been a friend, uh, Franco has been a friend of the family for many, many years. Can you imagine if just walking past Paradise Beach, another place which is um, a, a good stop off point for us while the uh, grandchildren are playing in the park there. So, Indian Freya, you don't see very much on the videos because. Uh, Mum doesn't like them to be on the videos too much, so you won't see them, but uh, you do, we'll see Anita making a cake for Freya, birthday cake, and uh, that was for her birthday party. There's uh, more trees on that side and there's some families there setting up under those trees. It's, uh, Shade is what your oh, these little girls dressed up in their tutus or whatever they call another birthday party down on the beach. Some wigwams as well on the beach. How lovely is that? The green flag's out. Lifeguards on duty, that means the sea's safe. And there's an onshore breeze, so uh, if you get into the sea, you're likely to get blown back to land. 
it's when there's an offshore breeze you really have a problem. There have been a few issues this year with um, people drowning. It's really sad that people come on holiday here and uh, don't go home. And probably even more sad is the fact that many of them have been children or toddlers. That's the sad side of it. We're just coming to the Calablanca. Terrace on the Santa Lucia as well. Yeah, looking forward in front of us, we've got the uh, Santa Lucia Hotel. And uh, a few years ago, they installed a roof terrace up there. You have to be a member of their Platinum Club or something to use it. You know, you've got a separate wristband. Um, but I guess you can't really see much from this video, but top floor. Is, uh, is going to give you spectacular views over Palmanova and much of the rest of the island actually because it's uh, I guess from up there you can see everything I think I might have been up there once just to have a look down look around quite a while ago there Rogers Bar we've not been there yet it's one that's been recommended to us place for a bite to eat I'm told. And one person that regularly mentions Rogers Bar and all the bars around the back there is, is Jim. Jim McDonald. And he's coming on holiday soon so look out bars, here comes Jim. He likes Pappy's Bar, he likes Taylor's, Munro's, Rogers. This is Barbuda, which we're walking past at the moment. One of our favourites too. Can we walk a bit further? I'm, I seem to be doing all right. I've got a bit of a, a dodgy right knee today. Yeah. More limping for me. Just hoping I can walk it off. So here we are, pancakes served all day. Pancakes are your thing. Diana Beach Club. Busy, busy, busy. And it's, uh, it's only just 11 o'clock in the morning. Middle Beach here in Palmanova. Okay, well, you can just see how busy it is. The people in the sea, pedlos, lots of pedlos out, and some nice boats on the sea there too. And the sea is looking quite clear, even though it is a little bit choppy today. clearly see the bottom very clearly. It'll be a bit choppy for snorkeling. Being in the sea, have we? No. No, we've missed our swims this year. Being in England for six weeks, I suppose that would have been the time we would have gone down for a swim. We used to go down pretty early for an eight o'clock swim. Yeah. 
across the Santa Lucia. I've been asked lots of questions about uh, what's going to be open and when it's going to be open at different times of the year. So nothing is predictable anymore because times have changed and normally the season would end at the end of October and start again at Easter. What's going to happen this year isn't very clear. We're talking about a bumper month for September and expecting September to be really busy. Um, you're probably going to get October. We'll carry on from that and then you've got for the UK travellers you've got a half term so that falls at the end of October. But whether the hotels will all shut at the end of October remains to be seen. Some of them may decide to stay open because they've got the bookings. So it should be clear by now what's going to happen. When the hotels close, a lot of the businesses will decide that it's time to take their winter holiday. So you'll find a lot of the bars will close if the hotels are closed. And the same is true at the opening of the season. Um, some bars will close for the whole of the winter and then open when the hotels start to open. Some of them will open a little bit earlier. Some of them will stay open all through the year and uh, rely on locals and the few tourists that we do have. Um, some of them show the football matches. So it's really difficult to predict what's going to happen because we're in strange times as well. Who knows what's going to happen with the Ukraine war? Who knows what's going to happen with the economies? This big beach though here in in San Matias is very very busy. So lots and lots of people on this one. And we're just going past the Santa Lucia, so I can't fail to mention Shauna and her mum, Claire, who had a holiday here earlier on this year. We managed to see them and uh, they must have enjoyed it because they've already booked up for 2023. So I look forward to seeing them then. shade. <laughs> this is really hot. Uh, the temperature is beginning to soar so uh, we're going to uh, shorten our walk. We're not going to go all the way to the end of this beach. It's just uh, a little bit too warm. Uh, but we are going to walk past the San Matias. It's very popular with uh, people who watch our YouTube channel because uh, many of them do stay there. It's uh, adults only and uh, provides a good service. Anita did say she wanted to have a look at dresses in the car. She hasn't done much of that. any shops. <laughs> oh, have I planned the route wrong, dear? <laughs> We're going to cross over, you might see a shot now. Might even be a little bit of shade. Just in front of us is the main entrance to the San Matias Hotel. I'm not sure if uh, Mark is performing there. He does uh, some great shows in many of the places. And was always a regular at San Matias. Mark Ritchie. Hello, 
ver qué pasa si con los And directly in front is the Globales Nova Apartments, another place which is very popular and uh, frequently mentioned and asked about. One sad loss for many is the Restaurante El Mecca, Mecca El Mecca, closed and uh, from what people have told me it's not going to open again. Uh, it was run by two brothers and they now uh, will no longer be running it. There are some more restaurants across the road. Much open at the moment because um, it's the wrong time of the day. It's like one at the end there, running coffee. I can see it's just a cafe. This is one of the car parks we sometimes try to use. Not always got space though. If you do have a car, a car park it can be difficult. The road down there takes you to what used to be Lady Dyes, it's now closed, but that's the back of Lady Dyes and then onto the beach. If you want to catch a bus, um, here's one of the bus stops, got lots of information here, you just read the information, it tells you when the next bus is due to all electronic. But if, you've, uh, if you do have a car, there's another car park on the left here, which uh, occasionally has space. These are both free car parks, by the way. You don't have to pay for either of them. They are municipal keep free car parks. But as you can see, pretty full today. If there's a blue line on the road, it means you've got to pay. And uh, you just need to go to the nearest meter and uh, find out how much you've got to pay. Depends on the time of day, of course. It's uh, usually free at night time and siesta time, which is uh, lunch time. There's a man with a camera. <laughs> Me around this way because someone asked me today in one of the messages about the salt palm manoeuvre and they're going to actually be coming here and uh, we met Sue earlier on who's staying at the salt palm manoeuvre so we thought we'd have a little walk past uh, just to show where it is and if you're staying here there is a gate at the back apparently which you can actually go through this is the Salt Palm Nova, that's the main entrance there. And this is number one, and next door is number two. And they're both Melia hotels. It's part of the Melia group. One thing I uh, frequently criticize in different parts of the island is the amount of graffiti, uh, particularly in Palma. The wall across the road has some particularly pretty graffiti. I think that's quite nice. Nicely done, nice colours and enriches the area unlike the stuff we see in other places. I think we're going to try and cross over because I think there's a bit more shady over there. This is the post office here, if you want to send packets and parcels then you have to come and get them weighed and 
sent off here. But if you're sending them to the UK, it's probably advisable not to. Uh, since Brexit, we've got all sorts of issues with packages and parcels. So, yeah, so across the road, we've got the salt palm over one and the salt palm over two. And on this side, we've got a bit of shade. One of the things uh, a lot of the smaller parties in government here in Mallorca are concerned about is mass tourism. Uh, yesterday we were driving along the front in Palma and saw five of these very large cruise ships in and uh, that means lots and lots of passengers, most of whom will uh, disembark and go to Palma, which is great for the businesses because they earn money but the ships themselves do cause a lot of pollution and all, all tourism isn't considered to be good not only that though is the hotels as well and we've got several political parties here that uh, want to reduce the amount of tourism on the island so as to reduce the stress that's caused on the infrastructure during the summer months, so for three or four months when it's really, really busy, just to reduce that. People tend to forget though that that's why the, the island is so wealthy. If you didn't have that mass tourism, then you wouldn't have the money to support all of the other things that happen on the island. So it's a difficult one and uh, and see where it leads. But driving yesterday across to Calamillor, you just saw that most of the island is actually empty space. It's farmland, it's uh, fincas, uh, it's not built up. The built up areas are very much around the coast, so places like Parmanova and Magaluf, Calamillor, as we went to yesterday are very very built up but it stretches only in a few hundred meters or kilometers into the island and then you're into lovely green spaces hotel in front to the left is the aquasol and uh, Owned hotel. One criticism here is the very, very steep ramp. If you've got a wheelchair, you're going to struggle to get it up there. So I don't know how we get around that. But uh, we've lost the shade on this side, so we're going to cross over again to the other side. Before I do that, though, I just need to mention the fact that there, there is another car park here, another free car park, which they have recently asphalted. And uh, asphalted some of it. But provides a really good parking space for sort of the middle of Parmanova. on the right here as I'm walking along this is the Bermudas Hotel and this is part of the Fergus group so quite often people say tell me what about the Fergus Hotel because there's lots of Fergus hotels just like there's lots of Melia hotels and the Burostar hotels so this is just one of the Fergus Hotel, one of the large groups. 
over on the other side behind the trees is uh, Don Bigotti, except it's not called Don Bigotti anymore, it's now called the Tent. T E N T, Tent Hotel. And it's supposedly a new concept in hotels, which is uh, based on minimalistic ideas, but they've got a pool and uh, reasonable, good, good uh, comments that I've heard. I've not really heard any particularly bad comments of the Tent Hotel. It is all very new this year, so perhaps we'll find out a little bit more when we see comments when the season's finished. Ballets, I think that's the Panama. We're heading back towards the beach, towards the front, trying to keep in as much shade as we possibly can. How are you doing? Hot. You're hot. Well, we're on the homeward stretch now. As long as we can keep in the shade. Always a good Sunday morning walk. Just a little bit better when it's a little bit cooler. Nice, uh, nice big circle there. Actually, Jim, you're coming soon, so you can check out Monroe's and Taylor's. So uh, we haven't walked past those today. little breeze now just coming us down just a little bit not a lot Hi. <laughs> have you you're watching us on youtube yeah we have mate yeah. <laughs> nice to see you nice you're to see right. you too you all right yeah you do a good job yeah. Nice to have a chat to someone who's been watching the YouTube channel, staying at the Palmanova Hotel down at the other end here. This is also a bit complicated when you talk about the Palmanova Hotel because there are several of those as well. So Hotel Palmanova, uh, as a global is hotel, is down by the roundabout. And then there's the Palmanova Palace. And then there's the Sol Palmanova and the Senses Palmanova. It's a Palmanova hotel. Yeah. Bet the postman has a real tricky job trying to identify where the letters are to go. You got some shade now, dear. Mostly shade now, all the way. Well, at least for the next bit.
since we uh, walked past this beach earlier on. It's uh, filled up a lot more. Lots more families set up under the trees. Parties uh, going well by the looks of things. Still more people bringing their beds, seats. Said to Anita we should look for some of those in the end of season sales. Scar invading the promenade here. They don't like to be filmed, so I might have to switch off in there. Nice boats out on the sea there, and uh, jet skiers. have gone into a shop across the road, I don't know if there's been any issue or whether they're just doing a spot of shopping, which you think they do sometimes. All in the line of duty of course. How many? Five. Five? We'll have to go back and do it again. I don't think I could do it again actually. So, yeah. Well, I think we've probably got another thousand or more steps to do before we get back to the car. So, see how we feel this afternoon, whether we do in fact go out. Because if this museum opens up, we mentioned just uh, it opens at three o'clock, which is a really hot time of the day. Uh, not an ideal time to be walking around anywhere. Too hot there. And then just across the road, that's where Nova Itapa is. And uh, we've been there a few times and really enjoyed it. We took our uh, family there, a big table, and they, uh, they did us proud with all the different tapas that we'd ordered. Really good. They really enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it. Uh, it's Nova Itapa. If you're looking for tapas, it's one of the places you can go to. It's nice to see they're actually advertising Real Mallorca there. More than just football, RCD Mallorca, La Liga. And uh, it's caused a bit of a controversy too that uh, 
the government decided to sponsor the new stadium and uh, so that means it will be called the Visit Mallorca Stadium. But some of the political parties didn't like the fact that they were supporting uh, a football team. They must be Real Madrid or Barcelona supporters, I think. Anyway, they don't really want the money to be spent on supporting Real Mallorca. It seems like that. Anyway, it's all being discussed at the moment. I'm not sure where we've got. It was about 1.8 million euros at stake. Um, which probably, well, it's, it's a sizable amount of money. But at the moment, we're undergoing major refits and re refurbishment of the stadium, um, which is costing a lot more than 1.8 million. And uh, some of that money is coming from La Liga, I think. And, uh, saw it from the owners who plowed in apparently over the years since they've had it something like 50 million euros it's owned by an American group who are um, very much into basketball NBA basketball um, but they saw Mallorca as a, an opportunity to get into La Liga football and uh, They've been great, I think. Um, they've uh, really supported the uh, team, the, the club, and uh, invested lots and lots of money in it. Uh, even though they went down into the second division, they didn't drop out. And they've always said they're in for the long haul. So, thank you to them. And uh, I will be putting out some more videos of the stadium as it progresses and uh, gets its new roof on. Uh, so they've done the east stand now, it's actually been finished, built and used, uh, but they haven't finished putting the roof on it. So that will happen hopefully over the next few weeks and uh, we'll see the improvement there. Do you want to cross over again dear? the sun is beating down on this side and there is not going to be a lot of shade. The shade all seems to be on this side. Mortally cross the road. This is the Agua Beach Hotel. As opposed to the Aqua Sol Hotel that we passed recently. Back to the Colmena, which is the beehive. This uh, place here is brand new. It's gone, it's uh, had a bit of a makeover, so we know nothing about it. Uh, it's called Contro Corrente, Italian Food Fusion Grill. So that's somewhere we need to investigate. It used to be the paper shop and the little bar there. Um, so it was two establishments, now it's one establishment. Um, so uh, that's all been built, created over the past uh, few months while we've been away. So definitely something we need to keep an eye on and uh, have to try out. I'm trying out too many restaurants at the moment because I'm uh, on the diet and uh, I've got to lose a little bit of weight. Decided that's the best way to help my knees. So, uh, in the past week I've lost a couple of kilos, two kilos. This is not a lot, but it's a start. And uh, see how long I can keep that up. Hopefully, when work starts, it will be a bit easier because I don't have much else to do but work. Bars here all getting ready to open up, cleaning up, getting ready. This is Rossini's. Saw some indifferent reviews here. Not somewhere we've tried. It smells good though. That might be the Thai beach food actually, or the saffron. Another really good place for tapas is this one we're coming up to just beyond the tobaccos and that is my tapas. 
and we have been there and we have a really good tapas there so really happy with that one and the place next to it which is top fruity favorite with our grandchildren they really like the nice greens there back into the sun, sorry dear. <laughs> Past the Fergus palm and over. The Fergus style palm and over, four stones. On this side we've got the the last of the bars really. You're just racing your head for a little bit of shade. Mai Tai, one of our go-to places. We do menu Daldia here, 14.50, so if you're not sure whether you like the food, then 14.50 gives you a great opportunity to find out. Um, that's the midday sort of menu Daldia there, and uh, we've done it and it's uh, really good. So I really enjoyed that. We're gonna cross over yet again for that little bit of shade that we can get on the far side of the road. Avenida de la Palacio. Those of you who are into Japanese type food, food it's a bit confusing here because what was on the right here used to be Sakana, across the road, it used to be Sakana, but Sakana's moved up the road and this one's changed its name to uh, Vesiki and uh, Sushi. I'm not sure what's going on there, but Sakana and Vesuki are different places doing pretty much the same thing. This is the Jaipur Indian restaurant, so one of the places you can try for a, an Indian. just gone past the saffron and there is another one nearer to the uh, Santa Lucia hotel which we've not yet tried. Just keep past the Eroski which is a good place to get your supplies at uh, a relatively reasonable price. Enjoy the shade there. <laughs> this place here is um, like a little medical centre where they specialise in doing your driving licence. So every 10 years here you have to renew your driving licence. And to get a new driving licence you have to have a medical certificate. So you come here and you do your medical. Which uh, involves eye tests and ear tests and uh, various other little tests. 
how they do a psychometric test where they actually put you on a, like a computer game. I'm sure you can, well for me it was to follow a spot, but I've heard there are some which are a little bit more complicated. It seems to me a little bit unfair because us oldies don't really do that sort of thing, whereas the uh, children playing their games probably do it all the time. So. They have an unfair advantage. But I've never actually heard of anybody failing that test. So maybe it doesn't really matter. And we need to cross the road again to get to the car park. Monument in front of us in the middle of the roundabout there is to honour the fallen Guardia Seville who got blown up in the Eta Terrorist bomb quite a few years ago now. now. I was saying earlier that uh, Mallorca tends to be built up around the coast, not even all of the coast, but places like Palmenero and Magali. But we're about 300 metres from the sea where we are now. And uh, beyond here, it's just mountains and trees. So it is a very thin strip of dense population. And uh, beyond that, it's beautiful, empty, open countryside, mountains with forests, which are always remarkably green because they're pine forests by and large a few other trees but by and large it's pine forest so it looks green all the year round even in the height of summer right. we back to the car there's another car park here so Palmanova is quite well serviced with car parks and this one's quite a, a big one uh, with the medical centre attached to it and a big cafe restaurant uh, which used to be called Lama Dippers but I'm not sure it's changed its name, it's uh, somewhat shorter now. Quite often go there for a, a coffee. In the breakfast, the breakfast there too, and it's run by a charity, so it helps that particular charity. It's very good, worth a visit, and not perhaps on the regular tourist walk. Beyond that, there's actually uh, another car park, just a little bit further. It was originally intended to be a bus station. Uh, but uh, Calvi forgot to ask the bus company where they wanted it and they put it there and it, the bus company said it's used to us, it's not in Palma, in Palma Nova. So they never used it. So it became a police station at the time, but it's now council offices. When you go to park there though, the parking is in uh, spaces that were originally designed for uh, coaches. just met some school friends and uh, we're back at the car so thanks very much for watching and we look forward to seeing you in our next video so bye for now bye